Joseph Kaczynski, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Welcome to Ireland. Thank you very much. It's a this, pleasure to be here. Do you know where you are at the moment? Because this has been a whirlwind tour. It has. You know, this is only my second stop, so I'm still relatively aware of where I am. I'm really excited to be here. I've never been to Ireland before, so um, yeah, we've had a great time so far. What's it like traveling the world with Tom Cruise? I know this is only your second stop, but you're going on to Taiwan. I've seen him on red carpets. Yeah. This man seems like he has a boundless amount of energy. It's true. I mean, I, you know, after working with him for a few years on this project, it's the same on set. He, um, he's the hardest working person I know, so dedicated, and really inspires all those around him to work just as hard. So, yeah, when I see him out on the red carpet, that's just the Tom I know. How did you get him involved in this project? Well, I had written uh, this short story. Um, I had a, a book of images that I had put together for it, and Tom had gotten his hands on it somehow. I'm not exactly sure how he did. How does that happen? <laughs> he just, you know, he's got his ways. He got his hands on it. He called me up and said, I want to meet and talk about this. This sounds really interesting. So I pitched him the story and told him the movie I wanted to make, and uh, he, you know, sparked to it right away. I think it was something new for him. He hadn't heard a story like this before. He'd never played a character like this before. And, um, yeah, he signed on at, at an early stage. So I was very lucky to have that happen. Do you know what I love? You say it like it happens every day. Yeah, I just got a phone call from I Tom know, Cruise. I know, I know. What was that moment like? It's pretty surreal. There's a lot of surreal moments like that in this yeah. job. You know, seeing him and Morgan Freeman on screen together for the first time um, in this movie. Um, you know, every day something like that would happen. So it's, it's, it's fun. Were there any scary moments on set? Because I know that Tom likes to do a lot of his own stunts. Were there any moments where you just went... Enough! The yes. insurance company is going to kill me! Yes, you know, uh, there's a lot like that. Whenever you're doing stunts, I mean, the stunts he does in this film are generally dangerous, whether it's on a you know, bike, you know, 70 miles an hour, screaming across the Icelandic desert, or, you know, falling from a 60-foot drop, uh, you know, in the New York Public Library. Um, but Tom's a real pro. He really could be a professional stuntman if he wanted to be. Um, so... We're always safe, but it still takes some guts to do the stuff he's doing. It takes guts for you to sign on to a movie like this as well, because you said yourself, like, the sets are huge. Yeah. How do you coordinate that, and were you ever overwhelmed? It's, uh, you know, you, you, you build a really strong team of people um, that, and, and really as a director, you're kind of providing a, a vision, an end goal. You need a lot of help to get there because these films are so massive. Um, but, you know, I try to just enjoy every day. I mean, this is, you know, living a dream for me and have fun yeah. and work hard and, um, you know, work with great people. And um, how, where did you get the inspiration for this? Because it's not, it's not your everyday kind yeah. of movie. Yeah, you know, I don't know where ideas come from, but uh, I think I was inspired by the kind of science fiction films and stories I read as a kid, which were very kind of character-driven um, and uh, I wanted to make a film that had a lot of twists and turns, had a little bit of everything in it, drama, romance, and action. Uh, so I think that's where the story came from. And, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I think we've, you know, accomplished that. Well, you know, it's about the twist, because these days audiences go in expecting a twist. Yeah. How do you surprise audiences? Well, if you have only one twist in your movie, you know, it's not enough. Um, so uh, we've got a couple of them. I think this is a movie where people really need to pay attention. You know, you can't skip out uh, halfway through and come back and expect to catch up. Um, so I would just say, you know, this movie you have to listen, pay attention, and, uh, you know, even for people who don't normally go to science fiction films, I think this film has a little bit for everyone. I don't like 3D. Mm -hmm. I was thrilled that this wasn't in 3D. Right. Was there pressure from the studio to turn this into a 3D film, and why didn't you go down that route? Not, not really. I mean, uh, I wanted this to be a, a daytime science fiction film, and, and I wanted the scenes to be as bright and vivid as possible. And right now, 3D just can't compete with 2D in terms of brightness. Um, so I'd shot a 3D movie before. I feel like I'd done that. Um, for this film, I wanted to try a different format, which is we shot it with, in 4K, which is a really high-resolution format, so it looks great on the big screen, like IMAX, you know, yeah. that's kind of my favorite way to watch it. And finally, do you think there'll be a sequel for this? And talking about sequels, yeah, Tron, yeah, will there be a sequel? What's happening with that? Uh, you know, we're working on a story right now for Tron. Uh, we've got a really exciting idea. The script's in process. Um, looking forward to reading it very soon. Uh, so, you know, if everything comes together, it'd be fun to go back. Looking forward to it. Joseph, thank you so much, and enjoy the premiere tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for so that, much. Joseph.